I hope you had a fantastic weekend and you're ready to get back to doing some schoolwork. We are going to start on our math for the week and we're back to doing decimals. I hope you found out that decimals are actually pretty fun. You're going to enjoy them. They're not hard. And so we're going to spend um, this week working on decimals and I believe a little into next week as well doing decimals. So lots of decimals ahead. Turn in your book to page 731. This is lesson 111. So the first page of, 100, of lesson 111 is on page 731. If you look at the title there, it says multiplying decimal numbers by 10, by 100, and by 1000. And I want to show you how easy it is to do that. All you have to do is move your decimal point over. So let's say, for example, we have the number 345 thousandths. If I want to multiply that by 10, look at all that I have to do. First of all, I'm going to count how many zeros do I have out here in my tens number. I've just 10 has one zero in it, so all I have to do is move that decimal point that was there one spot over to the right. So the answer is 3.45. 3 and 45 hundredths. Isn't that nifty? Okay, let's take the same number. I'm going to just write it again here. And we're going to multiply it. I'll make that decimal nice and big so you can see it. This time, let's multiply it by 100. How many zeros are in 100? Two, right? So the answer is just moving the decimal two places over. So my final answer is... 34.5, 34 and 5 tenths. I've got to make sure I make my decimals big enough for you to see. All right, that's all you have to do. Let's do the same thing with 1,000. So we're going to have our same number, 345 thousandths, and this time I'm going to multiply it by 1,000. Something a little nifty we have to notice in this one. Okay. How many zeros are there in 1,000? Three, right? So I have to move it over one, two, three places to right there. So my answer is 345. Now, I could put a point zero on the end of there if I wanted to keep my decimal point in there. I don't, having the point zero doesn't mean anything because it's just showing there's nothing down there, but you don't need it. So I would just leave it as a whole number. 345, decimal point kind of disappears, okay? Now, taking the same idea, you're gonna have some problems like this on your assignment. If we wanted to multiply the same number, 345 thousandths, if we wanted to multiply it by 10,000, okay? How many zeros are in 10,000? One, two, three, four, there's four zeros. So I need to move it over the decimal four places and let's see what happens. I go one, two, three, and I have run out of room. There's no more place to go. Guess what? What you do, you have to move it over that fourth decimal place to here, there it is. And you fill in the gap with a zero, okay? So my answer is, 3,450, okay? Do you see how that works? Do you see how when you look at the answers as, the, as I multiplied by 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, as there are more zeros, the decimal place just moved over one spot each time. We were at 3.45, 34.5, 345, 3,450. Do you see a pattern there? That's why multiplying by tens, hundreds, and thousands is so easy. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, your assignment today is the lesson practice in lesson 111 in the book. So it is page 733, page 733, and you are doing A through I. And you're going to see these problems are going to go pretty fast because all you're doing is moving the decimal. Your problems there are all just like what we did here. If you look at those, the first number is 
one and two hundred and thirty-four thousandths. And on A, you multiply it by ten. On B, you multiply it by a thousand. And on C, you multiply it by a hundred. Okay? And then D, E, and F are another set like this. And G, H, and I are another set like this. Okay? Does that make sense? So you're just shoving decimals over. Remember, the decimal goes, when you multiply, the decimal goes to the right. Now, the second part of your assignment, because that's going to take you like five minutes to do that. The second part of your assignment is the worksheet that says lesson 10.2 and it's practice, okay? So lesson 10.2, this one has similar stuff on it. It gives you 18 more problems to practice on. And I wanted to show you a couple things with this. Let me erase this so I have room to write here. All right, so grab your worksheet that says 10.2. Up at the top part, numbers one through six, it says use mental math to complete. It's because you're gonna see a pattern. You're gonna know what's happening next. Um, it's number one says one times seven thousandths is seven thousandths. 10 times seven thousandths is seven hundredths. 100 times 7 thousandths is 7 tenths. So you have to, you see the pattern there. You have to fill in the last one. Instead of trying, trying to fit it in the little tiny box, you're just writing on the line. And so the last problem for you to, is the one you do there. It's 1,000 times 7 thousandths. Okay? So I'm looking at how many zeros I have. One, two, three. I move this over one, two, three. Three, there's my zero, so that equals seven. So you'd write a seven on the line for number one. This is number one, okay? So that's how you do each of these. Whichever the box is missing, you fill in what would go there. And notice on three and four, there's two empty boxes, and on five and six, there are three empty boxes. So you need to make sure you do all the parts that are missing there, okay? Oh, I kind of sneeze. Whew, almost. Maybe. Oh, here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Notice, please, on 7 through 12, you're giving three answers on each one. Let's do number 7 together, okay? This is from your worksheet, number 7. It's the, what they give you is 4 tenths. And it says... The directions for that section say multiply each number by 10, by 100, and by 1,000, okay? So, let me get my green pen going here. If we're going to multiply it by 10, we go over one decimal point. So, times 10 would be 4. If we're going to multiply times 100, I'm going to have my decimal go over one, two places, and that would be 40. And when I multiply it by 1,000, that's the last one, right? Yep, 1,000. It has to go three places over, so it's one, two, three. I'm imagining it there, and my answer would be 400. So you're going to have, those are your three answers for number seven. Four, 40, and 400. Just write it, there's a line like that, and just write four, comma. 40, comma, and 400, okay? And that's how you'll do that one. Um, the last section, 13 through 18, you're finding the value of N. And you're gonna have to figure out what would replace N to make that number sen sentence make sense, to make it true, okay? So that just has one answer each. Number 13 says 10 times N equals eight. This is number 13. 10 times n equals 8. What times 10 would equal 8? Okay? Think about this. If I multiplied something times 10 and I came up with 8, that means the decimal currently is right here. The decimal would go back to the left one place because there's one zero again. So n equals 0 0.8. So when you look for the, when you try and figure these out, test your theory of what your answer is and see if it makes sense. 
Is it true that 10 times 8 tenths equals 8? Is that true? 10 has one zero on it, so we move it to the right one, and there it is, over to the right of the 8. And that is true. 10 times 0.8 equals a plain 8, with a decimal after the 8. Remember that zero just drops off there. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay? Make sense? That's how you do those. Your last two problems, 19 and 20, are extra credit ones. The mixed review on these are always extra credit for you. So that's everything you have for this assignment. Hope it goes well. Let me know if you have questions. I think you're going to find it fun. We'll see ya.